legend maps are useful tools for ordering data and through it for asking questions. Why did a certain image emerge the way it did? Legend maps are also limited. They show the result of a historical process, not the process itself. They may be ordered by places, but they are really about people, the stories they told and the ideas they had to make sense of their world. Their limitations are also related to their production. They do not show what is not put on them. This seems an obvious observation, but the information unmapped is not always unknown. In the next 20 minutes, I will be showing and discussing legend maps of the Netherlands, and particularly those on werewolves in the Netherlands. I choose the werewolf as an example here, but I could also have opted to show you maps about the nightmare or about witches. You can consider it as revised or a new version of my article in Folklore, the esteemed English journal, not the other folklore, of 2007. The Netherlands, here in dark green, is located in the northwestern corner of Europe, on the coast of the North Sea. That is the first limitation. Legend maps of the Netherlands only reveal legends in the Netherlands and not beyond it. I will return to this. The people who told legends did not care much about administrative boundaries. Similar legends are told at the other side of the border, whether between the Netherlands and the Netherlands and Germany or Belgium. At the same time, there are differences within the Netherlands. So, in Dutch legend research, several phases can be discerned. From the late 19th, 19th century to the 1940s, captured in Sinninger's catalogue, from 1934 to 1950s, the folklore questionnaires, which had the explicit purpose to be turned into maps for the folklore atlas. And then the 1960s and 1970s were very late direct oral interviews were held. This is one example. Parts of this research are available in the Dutch Volksverhalen Bank, the folktale repository, which can be called the latest phase. Typing in werewolf results in 400 hits of werewolf folktales. This is late January 2021. The bank automatically generates maps when you press the right button. This is the latest version from Isabel, which is perhaps clearer, but basically the same. These two maps are the same. However, it doesn't mean that werewolves were only found where there are red or yellow or green or orange dots. To interpret this map correctly, its production needs to be taken into consideration. The most dense concentrations yeah, yeah, of werewolves originate from two collections by Koiman here on the Volksverhalen Bank and by Jaarsma. There are this is Jaarsma, uh, the orange spots on the Isabel map. About two thirds of the total amount of legends. These two legends researchers both participated in the 1960s and 1970s oral interviews. Jaarsma's research was so extensive, he needed a separate map. His werewolf legends consisted mainly of the comments that the werewolf was a seventh son. 
So looking at the map of the 1960s legends research makes it immediately obvious that not every researcher indicated by concentric circles like here, here, here etc. <coughs> has been incorporated into the Volksverhalenbank. It is an ongoing process. Herpers is still missing and so is Krosenbrink. Of the results of the interviewers in Limburg, which is this area, only one has been included, Engels. Which is especially unfortunate when it comes to werewolves. To yield an overview of particular legends, the map of the folktale bank needs to be adjusted. To take out text from post 1970s research and to insert missing texts. I have put the most important missing collections on the map just to show some of the work that still needs to be done, since the folktale bank is not only about werewolves. Next, I have quantified the werewolf text, which still needs to be incorporated. This will bring the total amount from 400 to 550. The next step would be to incorporate the adjacent German and Flemish collections. The, uh, this one is online. And this one you have to travel to Marburg for. Okay. One can also start at the other end with the catalogue of Sinningen. Between the numbers 801 and 850, there are 11 numbers dedicated to Weerwölfe but not every number is relevant. The catalog appeared in German, not only because it had to be in a major European language, but also because it was made under German occupation. So, <coughs> there are five types that are relevant here. 801, werewolf let a person carry him, has eight entries, six from the province of Limburg and two from the province of Gelderland. I consider this a memorate, especially because of its quantity, which is not yet visible in the catalogue. 821 is another Huckalf or Backrider legend from Limburg with only one entry. 822, the werewolf is hit and changes back into a human and is released or dies. Eight entries, seven from Limburg, one from Gelderland. 8.23, the thorn cloth. This is how oh, Sinningen mentioned this. Yeah, this a piece in the truck. Werewolf attacks someone and tears apart the cloth that is thrown at him. Later, as human, he still has the threads of the cloth between his teeth. This has nine entries, as you can see. Six from North Brabant, two from Zeeland, and one from Limburg. Internationally, this legend is known as the Werewolf Husband, Migratory Legend 4005. I have called it the Werewolf Lover, as the couple is not married and the engagement is broken off after the renovation. Then, age 24, the burnt skin or belt, eight entries. These are the four types Alphonse Rook later recognized in his PhD about the werewolf. The last two, especially the werewolf lover, are fabulous. The majority of werewolf legends originated from the provinces North Brabant and Limburg, and none from Holland or the northern provinces Frisia and Groningen. Sinningen did not, in fact could not, catalogue the Dutch versions of the Hungry 
farmhand. That's why it doesn't have a number. The werewolf as one of the seven sons, eight times mapped for the northern provinces. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah did not appear in the south of the Netherlands, nor in the legends collected by Koeman in the middle of the Netherlands. On the other hand, Jarsma did not find any backriders and any, hardly any werewolf lovers. In the bank, the type is sometimes more broadly interpreted than I would do. Legends in which a werewolf just tears a piece of cloth can hardly be seen as referring to the werewolf lover, especially when werewolves were said to tear everything. One explanation of the low occurrence of the werewolf lover is that one or two more or less complete versions had migrated from Limburg where Frisian men went to work in the mines. Another explanation is that the tale was barely remembered anymore. In the 1920s in Groningen, this is the 1970 edition, Huizinga Onnekes recorded one version of the story from her eight werewolf stories. In East Frisia, at the other side of the border, the tale was printed in 1876, now as a werewolf husband, whose wife died shortly after he had revealed his secret. Even if these few versions were local, there is still a stark difference between the north and south of the Netherlands. Can the maps help to explain it? Part of the explanation can be seen in a completely different map about religious affiliations in the Netherlands. Protestants are red. All Protestants here. And Catholics are green. The map shown is based on the census of 1849, but during the next hundred years, the situation between the two denominations hardly changed, except that the Protestants constantly split into different sects. Some werewolf fabulous were more frequently and better told by. Catholics than by Protestants, such as the werewolf lover or the burnt skin legend. The fact that Sinniger didn't catalogue the hungry farmers, farmhands also plays a part in this conclusion, as it may have been one of the fabulous tolls by Protestants. It nevertheless points to a different group of tales among members of the two denominations. The seventh son was a concept familiar among Protestants, not just in Frisia, but also in Groningen and neighboring Ostfriesland, up into Oldenburg. That is not the whole story, however. In the 1950s, the Dutch folklorist still drew maps, and one from 1954 concerned the behavior of the werewolf. Yeah, you can just see that. The orange circle, this one, right, indicated the back rider. The open circle, this one, stood for other meetings with the werewolf. Threats between someone's teeth are not immediately visible, only on the next map, which I will not show here. Yet the image the folktale bank provides of the werewolves in the questionnaires might be similar in general terms of distribution in Limburg here, and a few in North Brabant, Veldin here. And uh, the area between the big rivers here. It is also different, not at the least in terms of density. Since both maps were based on the same source material, there should be similarity. 
what explains the difference? One thing is that the bank only has selected only selected stories that were more or less complete. Its 33 items are far fewer than the material used for the 1954 map. In fact, only the items from the 1937 and 1953 questionnaires can be used for the comparison I'm undertaking here. That leaves only 21 texts instead of 33 which mostly derive from the 1953 questionnaire. More than 230 responses of the 1937 questionnaire have not been used in the bank. The conclusion is that the source material is not the same. This affects the northern items of the folktale bank map as well. The ones from Groningen, yeah. were told in 2007. I find them too modern and of doubtful orality and locality. One for Leeuwarden sent in, in yeah, 1955 concerns a resident there who provided information for Hardingsveld, which is here, which is much more fitting. Checking individual entries does help. That still leaves the 1954 map to explain, and in particular, the rather dense occurrence in the provinces of Limburg here, in comparison to the neighboring province of North Brabant here. The vast majorities of the inhabitants of both provinces were Catholic. The amount of 60 backriders in the responses to the questionnaire on the right, the backriders uh, is a closed circle, all those, vastly surpassed the eight numbers Sinninger incorporated under type number 801. The map for the back rider in the adjacent Rhineland in Germany, it's the black upright triangle, you can see it here, shows that in this respect, Limburg resembles Germany more than Brabant. And I just put them on about the same scale here. Uh, so here is a river which is here. Here is the border which is here. Okay. One of the last legends maps was drawn in 1960 about the Kinderschrik, the bogeyman. On the enlarged lower half, it becomes visible that in Gelderland, here, North Brabant and Limburg, North Brabant and Limburg again, the werewolf was known as a bogeyman. This is the green triangle, this one, with a round hole in the middle. This was not strictly a legend uh, an earlier one is the triangle yeah but a threat children were told that if they didn't behave properly the werewolf would come and get them it makes the difference between north brabant and limburg slightly less pronounced Okay. Now I come to my explanation. In Limburg, so the area, werewolves were prosecuted more and longer than elsewhere in the Netherlands. Because the province, it wasn't a province then, it was all bits and pieces, was much longer under Spanish administration and Catholic supervision. 
the map shows the trials between 1589, this is the famous Stump trial in Petsburg, and 1608, between Maastricht in the south and Arnhem in the north. There may have been more trials, but the state of the archives in Limburg doesn't facilitate research very much. The man with the ominous nickname, Jean Le Loup, who was convicted as a werewolf in Maastricht in 1607, confessed under torture to cannibalism, sodomy, as well to having bewitched a cow with the power given to him by the devil. At the place of his execution, a wooden wolf was placed on the wheel with the head of the convicted on a stake. We have a photograph of that. This display was definitely derived from the Stump trial. At around the same time, now I leave, leave that out, you have already seen this. So the influence of these trials lingered on, possibly through slander trials and storytelling. To conclude, legend mapping enables comparisons on a large scale as well as spotting oddities in a particular corpus. The basic feature of werewolves in the Netherlands are memoroids, back riders and seventh sons. The difference between Protestants and Catholics should be considered as a given in all legends research actually. We can talk about this later. Legend maps need to be sandwiched between density maps and religion maps. Legend maps also show the long-term influence of criminal trials. Maps, I think, also make it easier to squeeze a lot of material into a 20-minute talk. Thank you.